Greetings dear aspirants welcome to today's current affairs session of civil speedia today we'll be discussing about ganga gram project about adi mahotsav and about uh, the recent advancements in the india maldives relation under the prelims topic and about the microplastics pollution under the mains topic so let's move on with our first topic ganga gram project so it is ganga gram so uh, it is a project for all those villages uh, situated on the banks of river ganga so when we are studying about such projects the key words that we need to keep in our mind are about the project what is the objective of the project and which is the nodal ministry which is organizing this particular project and with regards to this topic we'll be knowing something about namami gange program so let's move on with our topic ganga gram project as i told uh, it is a scheme for developing all those villages situated on the banks of river ganga as a model villages with sanitation point of development so it is uh, when we speak about sanitation it is about declaring those villages as open defecation free by constructing the toilets so if you see about this particular ganga gram project it was started in december 2017 and now as a part of this pro uh, project all those villages situated on the banks of the river ganga has been declared odf and now they have started to focus on the solid and the liquid waste management with reference to this the fourth uh, Gang ganga gram uh, swachhata sammelan was held near kanpur so this was the recent current affairs with respect to this and if you see the nodal ministry for uh, handling this particular project is the ministry of drinking water and sanitation please keep this in mind so this ganga gram project is actually a subset or one of the pillars of the namami gange program so this is one of the flagship program started by narendra modi government in the year 2014 so this comes under the national mission for clean ganga and the nodal ministry for handling this particular namami gange program is the ministry of water resources river development and ganga rejuvenation so you are, you need to remember both the ministries so if suppose a prelims question comes uh, uh, explaining about the objective of the ganga gram project and the ministry can be confused with this particular ministry but it is actually the ministry of drinking water and sanitation so please uh, keep this in mind and one more uh, from prelims point of view if you need to know just remember what are those states in which the ganga river flows so it flows in five states namely uttarakhand uttar pradesh bihar jharkhand and west bengal so only five states uh, are those states through which the ganga river flows so let's move on to our next topic adi mahotsav split this topic into two adi adi is for those adivasis or the tribals and mahotsav denotes festival so from the name of this topic you can know that it is something about uh, adivasis or the tribals and it is a festival for the tribals so the key words that we need to know about under this topic are what is uh, this particular adi mahotsav and who are the organizers of these festivals and what is the theme of the festivals and for festivals in general point of view you can just remember these three key points and with respect to this topic we'll be also knowing about these three so let's move on to this as i told it is a festival celebrated for tribals which happens for 15 days in the city of delhi at delhi hart and the organizers here are the ministry of tribal uh, affairs and trifed so trifed is uh, the tribals marketing cooperative federation which is working under uh, the administrative control of the ministry of tribal affairs so it focuses on commercialization of all those uh, tribal products and as a part of this they are celebrating this festival every year so if you see the theme of this particular uh, adi mahotsav for 2018 they are going to celebrate the spirit of tribal culture craft cuisine and commerce so they are celebrating on four different acts culture craft cuisine and commerce so craft cuisine and commerce will be handled by this particular trifid and for tribal culture to celebrate the tribal culture the ministry of culture has also been tied up uh, under this festival so they'll handle the culture part and uh, with regards to this so this was the news from uh, the uh, public information bureau so as a part of this in their publication they have mentioned uh, different schools of painting and different saree collection especially the silk sarees collection so i would like to uh, you to know about uh, these different schools of painting and the sarees collection under the schools of uh, painting they have mentioned four different schools so one is the worli painting next is the pithora painting gaun painting and the saura painting so worli is from the state of maharashtra i have compiled this data and uh, pithora is from the state of gujarat especially in parts of central gujarat and gaun painting is spread across five different states where the gaun tribal population largely resides in the states of maharashtra andhra pradesh 
छत्तीसगढ़ ओडिशा एंड मध्य प्रदेश एंड दिस सौरा पेंटिंग इज फॉलोड बाय दो ट्राइबल्स फ्रॉम द स्टेट ऑफ ओडिशा विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू द हेरिटेज सारी कलेक्शन इफ यू सी Uh, there are uh, some five different sari collections mentioned in the in under that uh, public press release uh, so first one is the bandara silk sari collection from the state of maharashtra if you see uh, uh, majority of these names it uh, it denotes the place of that particular uh, in the in that particular state so if you see bandara is a place near nagpur in maharashtra so bandara silk sarees and maheshwari bag bag is a place in madhya pradesh it is for uh, largely produced by the bill tribes present in that uh, in the state of madhya pradesh by the bill tribes so they produce maheshwari bag sari and the third thing is the sambalpuri sari uh, largely produced by those tribals residing in the sambalpur district and the behrampur districts of odisha and tussar silk is uh, being produced by uh, tribals located across different states especially from bhagalpur from bihar from west bengal chatisgarh jharkhand and odisha and if you see cotton kanta sarees it is uh, largely produced by those tribals uh, who are uh, situated in the bengali uh, dominating states such as uh, west bengal tripura and odisha so it is famous among that community so this is all about the adi mahotsav that you need to know from prelims point of view but this we are moving on to our next topic india maldives relation so under this topic i would like to uh, just uh, give an idea about the recent advancements in the india maldives relation and something about the maldives so if you see country as maldives it is located southwest of india and its capital is mali and it has a presidential form of government so it is a presidential republic so uh, this is the location here capital mali and if you see i have discussed about uh, the importance of maldives for india and also for china part of their diamond of necklace and the string of pearl strategy respectively so let's not discuss more on that now i want to uh, just give an idea about uh, the ouster president through a democratic election and about the recent president and the advancements so let's uh, discuss about mr abdullah yamin so he came to power in the year 2013 since he came to uh, power he was uh, strongly uh, oriented towards uh, china and china took advantage and uh, they both came uh, with a china first policy so traditionally maldives since its independence as an india first policy but uh, with uh, the coming of uh, yamin it became a china first policy under this policy they went to have a free trade agreement from uh, the year december 2017 and as part of china's first policy it also signed an uh, memorandum of understanding for uh, constructing maritime uh, silk roads uh, under the bri initiative so under this uh, contracts were given to the chinese companies to develop their infrastructure and roads especially uh, a road was connected uh, from the mali island to the nearby hulhul island where the mali international airport is situated so such infrastructure projects were developed and uh, as an ultimate measure the some three uh, chinese ships were, naval ships were also docked uh, near uh, mali the capital of maldives in the month of august 2017 so this was uh, a kind of uh, intimation for india india strategy uh, in the marine area as well and uh, the highlight was the emergency which was declared in the month of february 2018 when all those uh, ex uh, presidents and the political opponents of mr yamin were released by us by the supreme court so emergency was declared and it, it remained there for some uh, around 45 days so this was the highlight of that and as a part of china's first policy uh, maldives uh, under the yamin government uh, uh, like sided ways with saudi arabia and pakistan Uh, supporting the uh, la- largely uh, orthodox muslim policies and they also parted from the international organizations such as commonwealth now ibrahim soli replaced mr abdullah yamin to, uh, through a democratic uh, means of elections and he won a won a majority uh, vote so once he uh, became once he was declared as a president the first thing in his first speech was that india is our closest ally thereby uh, he wanted to come away from the china first policy and uh, reengage with india as india's closest ally so when uh, he also invited a prime minister narendra modi for uh, the oath taking ceremony uh, to become the president so after that oath taking uh, ceremony both uh, the presidents uh, president of maldives mr soli and the prime minister of india mr modi came up with a joint press statement in that press statement they have emphasized for the need of maintaining the peace and security in the indian ocean region because indian ocean region is strategically important and also the indo pacific ocean which needs to be open for overall trade uh, movement of the world and uh, and also as a part of this uh, increased cooperation was uh, sought in combating the terrorism and terrorism is one of the major agenda for the present indian government so in whatever international forums it goes india emphasizes to combat the 
terrorism. And next thing is uh, to uh, uh, get help for infrastructure development, especially the Maldives, because uh, as a part of China's first policy, you can see some infrastructure projects that have come up. Similarly, uh, Maldives also want some infrastructure development with the help of India. Next is to expand the economic opportunities to the Indian corporate. So the Indian private companies will invest in Maldives for its infrastructure development and overall economic development. And uh, as a part of this, the visa procedures between the India and Maldives was also sought to be facilitated and eased. And uh, invitations for mutual visits were given to both the uh, countries. So this is all about the recent India-Maldives relation. So we can likely uh, see an improvement in the Indian-Maldives uh, relation in the forthcoming uh, months. And if you see now uh, the Maldives president has also thought to uh, cancel this free trade agreement with uh, China which is a welcome step for India. So let's move on to our next topic, microplastics pollution. So under a microplastic solution, I would like to uh, share some idea about what is microplastics and uh, what are the possible sources and impacts of because of this microplastics pollution and some of the government initiatives are uh, taken and the way forward where we can give our suggestions to combat this microplastics pollution. So let's move on to our topic. You need to know what is microplastics. So microplastics are basically those plastic par particles less than 5 millimeter size. So this is called the microplastic and there are two types of microplastic. It can be either primary or a secondary microplastic. Primary microplastics or uh, those plastic particles that come from the microfibers or the microbeads. If you see microbeads, they are largely used in the cosmetic industry. In your soap gels, uh, shampoo gels, uh, etc. And microfibers, if you see, they are the part of this polyester cloth materials, especially your nylon materials and when these uh, uh, cloth materials undergo washes, so the microfibers will be released during every wash which will be around 1500 to 2000 microfibers in number. So with every wash these microfibers enter the aquatic pathway. And with regards to uh, secondary microplastic, what is a secondary microplastics? So it is derived from those plastic particles which are larger in size, greater than 5 mm size and uh, they are likely to degrade uh, over a long period of time and they are likely to end up as a uh, secondary microplastic. Also those fish nets uh, where the fishermen discard at the larger oceans, those also tend to become microplastics. And uh, I would like to uh, explain you the point sources, source points of uh, these microplastics and the likely pathways it is uh, likely to follow and end up in the ocean because the uh, uh, end, uh, end uh, place is the ocean. So let me start illustrating it. So this is the land portion. Uh, roughly take this as the coastline of Tamil Nadu and the river Kaveri is flowing by. So you have got a uh, city here called Trichy. And you have got a major uh, metropolis here called Chennai. So Chennai people go to the coastlines. So they go and dump all those plastic wastes which end up as marine litter. And for example, if you see the, uh, when I told the primary sources of microplastics such as microfibers and microbeads, say if a person from this particular city called Trichy is using uh, microbeads uh, and it enters the aquatic pathway in uh, with the form of sewage canals. So most of these uh, sewage goes untreated. Say for example, this individual can also reside in Chennai. So this goes untreated and finally ends up the aquatic pathway. In this case, it might be uh, smaller canals, canals going to the rivers and the rivers finally dumping those water with the microplastics into the ocean. So all this forms as a par part of ocean litter. So ocean litter is the primary source here. So these are the likely pathways, the rivers, the canals, what are the uh, aquatic pathways and from here direct dumping on the coastlines. So these are the possible uh, pathways and if you see the impacts, it is uh, very likely known it will cause uh, impacts to the animal's health and also to people's health. How? Because with the help of bioaccumulation. So bioaccumulation is a process and uh, one more source I would like to explain. In the sea, if you see as I told, the fish nets, abandoned fish nets will be dumped here. They either will float or go to the seabed. So here you have the seabed here. So all these microplastics end up at the seabed surface or some might be floating on the sea surface, uh, on the inside the sea. So if you see, there are some aquatic animals like crabs or the starfishes. Or say the autotrophs such as phytoplanktons 
or algae. So the small fishes such as sardines, they consume on these autotrophs, phytoplanktons or algae. And in, in turn, this sardines will be consumed by tuna, which is a, a larger fish, for example, you take. And this tuna can also be consumed by whales. Now, it has got uh, different uses. These tuna, sardines are used for human consumption. And sometimes the whales are used for uh, processing uh, to be used in cosmetics and other industries. So, uh, people have conducted research and they have found that these microplastics are found inside the body of this tuna also here and also in the whales. And if you see these uh, microplastics or those secondary plastics as such can cause suffocation to all those marine animals. If you see there was an example where the olive ridley uh, turtles uh, went away from the nesting sites because the entire coastline was polluted with uh, the, the plastics. So it can also cause suffocation. So these are, uh, so this is the entire process is called bioaccumulation. So how it accumulates, for example, uh, say uh, here 1 gram. So if a tuna consumes 10 or 20 sardines, it is most likely to get that 20 gram. And if whale is going to consume a larger number of tunas, it can be greater than 100 gram. So it keeps on accumulating. And when uh, either the tuna or sardine is uh, consumed by the humans, most likely it will affect the human cell because he might unknowingly consume this microplastic. So this is all about the sources, impacts, uh, about uh, for the microplastics pollution because as such uh, microplastics uh, pollution is a very uh, bigger menace for the entire world but it is the least studied menace. So we are trying to bring out some possible sources, possible pathways and the possible impacts of the microplastic pollution. So I have discussed everything here, marine litter, the fishing industries which causes uh, ingestion, suffocation or entanglement so uh, its locomotion is completely uh, stopped. And uh, the, also the sewage treatment plants. If you see the sludges from the sewage treatment uh, plants are processed to become fertilizers. So these fertilizers when used uh, at, the, uh, at the agriculture uh, places and again with the help of water runoff from these fields to the nearby canals, it is more likely to join the aquatic pathway which will be either the river, pond or the uh, ocean. And uh, your clothing, which I explained, the microfibers, microbeads, and also uh, sea accidents also uh, tend to cause microplastic pollution. And especially vehicle tires, if you see, especially in the Scandinavian countries of Norway, Sweden, and Finland, vehicle tires one of the major source of the microplastic pollution. And the impacts I've already discussed, it uh, causes a larger impact on the human health and the animal health. Uh, in, in terms of human health, it is the food safety which is largely affected and bioaccumulation is one uh, impact. It can also uh, cause impact to the entire ecosystem because uh, when I explained here, it completely pollutes the marine ecosystem. So entire ecosystem impact is there, thereby causing an economic impact uh, to the countries and the burden on the waste management systems will also increase. If you see India has got a uh, very poor infrastructure with uh, terms of uh, the public uh, waste management systems. So this uh, already present waste management system is likely uh, to be uh, uh, more burdenized. And uh, there can also be possible tourism impacts because of this microplastics pollution. Plastics pollution is one thing and microplastics can also uh, pollute those river or any, any water bodies, for example, say pond. So it will uh, impact the tourism finally. So uh, India has taken some initiatives to combat the microplastic pollution not uh, very specifically the microplastic pollution, but plastic pollution in general. So you can uh, jot down some uh, initiatives taken by the Indian government. First thing, if you see, it's the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. The next thing is the solid waste management rules, which have been uh, recently released, notified in September 2018. So the rules of 2016. And uh, in this, they have, uh, uh, they have uh, asked to phase out the single-use plastics. And uh, there, there are also other schemes by the Indian Coast Guard where it goes for cleaning those uh, coastal lines uh, with the name, with the help of uh, these clean coast programs. And uh, as a part of waste management, uh, India wants to move towards a more sustainable waste management. So it has submitted a status report on the marine litter at the regional 3R forum held in Indore, Madhya Pradesh. So it has given a status report on the possible uh, impacts, sources uh, of these uh, marine litter. 
and if you see at institutional level also some research is being conducted so the recent current affairs was that uh, the central marine fisheries research institute those scientists from these institute have found out these uh, possible sources and the pathways of uh, the sardines and the tunas and other animals that are present uh, in the water bodies so they have understood the feeding behavior when they went for understanding the feeding behavior they also found that microplastics is one large concern affecting these animals health so what is the way forward you need to know what is uh, you can give some uh, way forward so you can suggest like extensive research needs to be done on understanding the scope the pathways of this uh, um, microplastic pollution and also the possible environmental impacts now that the status report uh, regarding this marine litter policy has been submitted by the government of india uh, so they can come up with a proper policy marine litter policy in order to uh, contain this um, uh, marine litter and india is as uh, sure to go, uh, should undergo the capacity building measures by uh, properly giving infrastructure for proper uh, public waste management system both solid and liquid so they can also be integrated waste management system at rural level urban level or suburban level and uh, moreover public awareness needs to be increased because if you see in the recent current affairs when uh, the citizens of delhi were interviewed about their knowledge of air pollution 90% of uh, the citizens told that they know what is air pollution but they do not know what are the causes of air pollution so public awareness needs to be increased about the usage of microplastics so that its usage can be curbed at the source level only and uh, overall community participation is needed to uh, 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 evade this microplastic pollution because all those coastlines majority of the coastlines of india are now polluted with uh, plastic so plastic pollution is at large if you see for example uh, the versava beach of mumbai with the help of citizenship initiative was recently clean so such community participation measures are needed to uh, contain this microplastic pollution so this is uh, all about today's topic uh, with this we are winding up our today's topic please do like comment share and subscribe uh, share the video and please subscribe for shankar is academy channel for latest videos and updates stay focused and motivated friends thank you